Now, once you understand and the economic meaning of this whole concept of price elasticity of supply and the maths behind this whole concept, the next thing that you need to know and learn is uh, the way in which you can look at uh, the shape of uh, or the graph of the supply curve. And just by its shape, you should be able to tell whether that's, uh, that product supply is uh, elastic or unitary elastic or inelastic. Now again, there are going to be similarities uh, between what we learned about uh, the shape of the demand curve and how we can predict from it whether the demand is elastic or inelastic and what we are going to learn now about the shape of the supply curve and how we can make similar predictions as far as the elasticity of supply is concerned. Now let me again just start off by what we have learned about the demand side of the things. The main thing that we learned regarding these shapes and the price elasticity of demand was that if a demand curve is flat, that means that and that is reflecting a relatively elastic demand as compared to another demand curve which is relatively more steep. So steeper demand curve, remember we learned, means inelastic demand. Now things are pretty similar on the supply side as well, but uh, first of all remember that the supply curve will always be an upward sloping line. It will be a positively sloped line that reflects your law of supply. That reflects the fact that price and quantity supplied, they, are, uh, they, they move in the same direction. When price increases, the quantity supplied increases. So supply curve first of all will always be upward sloping that reflects your law of supply. But as far as price elasticity of supply is concerned, again, you see a flatter supply curve and upward sloping, but a flatter supply curve means elastic supply. So elastic supply is when the supply curve is flat. Relative to, uh, let's draw another supply curve, which is more steep. So the steeper supply curve would be relatively more inelastic. So inelastic when the supply curve is steep. And now this is a good useful way of thinking about the supply and elasticity as well. Flatter means elastic, steeper means inelastic. Now you can think of it graphically in the sense if you have to find the economic meaning that when we are saying that a, a, a steep supply curve means inelastic supply, then all we are saying here is that you start with the end point and if you just go up, that is if you think of an increase in price, then the amount of quantity supplied, the amount that, by which you move to the right, it's not that much as compared to if you draw a very flat supply curve. Now if you just move a little bit higher, increase the price a little bit, the quantity supplied increases a lot. So that is why we have to memorize this thing, flatter means elastic, steeper means inelastic. So as I said, this is a good general way of thinking about uh, supply curves, its shapes and the elasticity. But there are a few specifics that you need to know about uh, and this whole thing about the supply curve and price elasticity of supply. And the specific thing that you need to know is that, you know, a supply curve, any supply curve, if it passes through the x-axis, like this steep supply curve, any supply curve that passes through the x-axis, it will reflect an elastic supply. So that is the second thing that you need to remember. In elastic supply, any supply curve passing through the x-axis. So it can be a supply curve like this, which looks pretty flat, or it can be a supply curve which looks uh, steep, or it can be a supply curve which looks very flat. But as long as it passes through the x-axis, Remember, that would be reflecting in elastic supply. So all of these supply curves reflect in elastic supply. Whereas uh, a flat supply curve that reflects elastic supply, but in addition to that, also remember that any supply curve that crosses the y-axis, that reflects elastic supply. So if I get rid of, uh, okay, let me do it over here on this graph over here. So any supply curve, this like this, this might look very, very steep. Uh, but since it's passing through the y-axis, then this means it's reflecting elastic supply. So any other supply curve, it can be like this or like this. As long as it passes any point on the y-axis, that reflects elastic supply. And then remember, the third and often, for some strange reason, and the most often asked case. And the supply curve shape and the supply is unitary elastic. And this in-between weird case.
Now here you have to memorize that any supply curve that passes through this origin over here. So any supply curve, it can be like this, it can be like this, it can be like this. But any supply curve that passes through the origin, so let me just draw it over here like this, means the supply is unitary elastic. Again, these are boring things, but these are important things because you will see the examiner will ask these things pretty much directly. He will give you a diagram like this and he will make you figure out which particular curve is elastic and inelastic and so on and so forth. So this is boring, but you have to memorize all of these things. Supply curve uh, it is going through the origin, unitary elastic, supply curve going through the x-axis, inelastic and a supply curve going through the y-axis is elastic. And then one other graph that you need to remember in relationship to the price elasticity of supply is the ones which reflect the extreme and you know theoretical cases of perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic supply. Now perfectly inelastic supply first of all remember what it means. Now, inelastic supply means when the supply or quantity supplied, I should say, changes just a little bit. Perfectly inelastic supply would imply when the quantity supply does not respond at all to changes in price. When quantity supply does not change at all. Now, again, it's, it's a theoretical extreme case which you won't find any examples of, uh, but you know, you have to know how you can uh, reflect this theoretical case on a graph and what it means. That is what the examiner will ask. So perfectly inelastic supply, we are saying where the price is P1 or P2 or P3 or whatever the price is. Quantity supplied is going to be what it is. So a straight vertical straight line that reflects perfectly inelastic supply. No matter what the price quantity supplied is always the same, it does not change. So this again is the sort of graph that you will see quite often and you just will have to pick up that it is reflecting perfectly in elastic supply. The producers, they don't respond at all when prices change. And then the last thing, a straight horizontal line would mean a perfectly elastic supply, a supply that is so responsive that if you look at any price other than this particular point, there is no supply curve. If you lower the price, the producers, they stop producing. You can think of it like this. They are so responsive that they just lower the quantity supply down to zero if price falls. And if price increases, they just increase the quantity supply to infinity. So this is just one way of thinking about the theoretical idea, but you just need to remember a straight horizontal line means perfectly elastic supply. So those are the sort of things, as I said, that you need to memorize boring but important stuff. But before I leave this topic of uh, the shapes and the elasticities, now since we know both about the price elasticity of supply and price elasticity of demand and how we can you know, graphically think about these uh, whole ideas, remember that we first of all started with this model of demand and supply where eventually we, you know, the, the useful part of this model is when we think of or put together demand and supply uh, in one place, in the one uh, graph. So, so far, we have been just sketching out this model of demand and supply and I said you can just, you know, you just need to ensure a downward sloping demand curve and upward sloping supply curve and you can start uh, with uh, any assumed initial equilibrium price P star and quantity Q star. But from now on, since we know this difference between a flatter and a steeper demand and supply curve, just make this whole analysis more useful. So in your essay questions, if you are talking about something where you have to show this graph of demand and supply, and if you want to talk about a product where, whose demand is very elastic, then all you need to do is that instead of drawing a demand curve, which is almost equally sloped uh, as the supply curve, uh, you just need to draw a demand curve, which is much more, let's say, flat relative to the steeper supply curve. Just draw a relatively flat demand curve and then your, your diagram, it will start capturing that you are talking about a demand which is very elastic. Similarly, if you want to, you know, in some essay question, if you are talking about a situation where the supply of a product is very elastic and then you need to throw in a diagram in your graph of this model of demand and supply, then instead of just drawing any demand supply curves, you want to show a supply which is relatively more inelastic. So draw a demand curve which is relatively flat 
in relationship to a supply curve, just draw it which is like a more straighter line. So the steeper supply curve relative to this flatter demand curve that could capture the fact that you are talking about relatively in elastic supply of the product. So this is how you can just, you know, use all of these things that you are learning here to make your essay answers much more precise, much more useful. And all of these small little things, they will, of course, help you in your MCQs, but they will just add a, a touch of excellence to your essay answers. And they will just ensure that, you know, you just get the top marks that are possible.